You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul, and here with me today is Mr. Vic Moss. Vic, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Today's a very exciting day for you, as it is for (laughs) many other people. And you just took the new Part 107 Remote Pilot Recency Exam. Did you pass? Of course. Or did you fail? No, I did. I I, I passed. Well, that's good. That's good. So Vic is here with us today because he's going to be telling us exactly what can we expect for the test. Is it different? How many questions are there? How much time do we get? What happens if you're a part 61 pilot? Do you have to go through the same process? Well, today we're going to hear Vic's story and we're going to go through the step-by-step process of exactly how you can renew your remote pilot certificate, aka drone driver's license for all the noobs out there. And the thing is, it it's really not as hard as the initial test. Is that right, Vic? Yeah, it really was. And, and and probably part of that is I've been using this stuff for the last two years. So maybe, and I use it a lot. I mean, like you, you know, I deal with it when I'm flying. And of course, I also deal with all the FAA information by when, when I'm working with other people and helping other people navigate the uh, the labyrinth, I think, is how I posted it earlier today, of FAA regulations. Awesome. And guys, if you are watching on YouTube, by the way, if you see the white balance or color shift, in Vic's video, it has nothing to do with his experience using Skype. It's, uh, I would say, <laughs> Skype's new user interface because we've been having nothing yeah, but it's problems. Horrible. Thank you, Skype. Thank you, Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry about that, Vic. But so, are we still going to be dealing with the same sixty questions? No, actually, there's forty now, but the questions are the same. You just have less. Um, yeah, same within reason. Um, there's not going to be any um, weather, and there's not going to be any loads. Gotcha. No loading in performance. So none of those questions that if I'm in a 30 degree bank and I need to do this or do that, uh, that how much, you know, how much G force or how much, yeah, you know, none of that nonsense yeah. because we don't need it. Yeah. No, Birds I by themselves for the most part. We just don't need to know that information. So did you have the same amount of time to finish the exam? No, actually we have 90 minutes as opposed to 120. Um, but like the other one, if you're coming up on 90 minutes <laughs> you got during the test, yeah, I'd really question whether or not you're going to pass. Um, unless you're just a slow uh, test taker, that's what it is. Uh, it took me a little little less than an hour, but the main thing is I went through everything. There were two I didn't know, three I didn't know um, right off the top of my head. And so you mark those on the test. You can go back to them, just like with the initial test. Um, and then you went back and got it, and the first one looked like, oh, yeah, it does. So I did that one. I had to go back into the other two. But once I did those three, I then went back and checked all 40 answers, um, which actually is a good thing because one of the questions, which I can't say the question because you're not supposed to show the questions, obviously. It was one of the most simple questions there was, and I got it wrong. Interesting. <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm going through this, and I'm looking, and I was like, that's the wrong answer. Why did I click that? But so I think, I think that's a, do it. I think that's a really important point. And I think the example is, is like, you know, guys, if you're like, the question is, you know, how high can you fly? And you're like, right. oh, 400 feet AGL, right? You know, that's a simple answer comes to mind. Right. But what if they're asking for 400 feet AGL and 400 feet above the tallest point of a building within a 400 foot radius of said building in class G airspace? Uh-huh. You know, so I think it's important for you guys just listen to Vic right here. I mean, even <laughs> though he's experienced, he's still dealing with corrections, and you know, we're all just a little hasty. We got to slow down. Yeah, yeah, that's ex- and that's exactly what it was. I read the question, oh, simple, boom, and I went back and looks like, oh, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> I, it, it's just it's like it's the most simple question you can get probably on the test, and I got it wrong when I looked back through it. It's like you idiot. Let me guess, it was the <laughs> who's ultimately responsible for the flight. Oh no no no! It wasn't even one of those. Of course, there were a few of those, which everybody knows the answer to, which we're not going to say. Remote pilot like, man. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all right. Is. So, is the process the same for getting? your or, or taking the test i mean are we still going to a knowledge testing center yeah. are we still yep. scheduling yep. an appointment yeah you go to catstest.com catstest.com um, and you find which knowledge center you want to take it at and then you call the number the 800 number for cats and um there you go i did mine at the uh, rocky mountain flight school at broomfield airport here in denver where i did my initial 
Gotcha. It is catstest.com. That is correct. So don't worry about that. You can email them. You can call them and set up a test whenever you want. So Although it says on their call. So you just call. Um, now, I know somebody called the number and they didn't – the person they were talking to didn't know – what the 107 recurrent test is, or currency test, or recurrency. There's like 17 recency. different things. Recency, recurrency. I mean, there's all kinds of different things you can call it. But they didn't know what it was. Gotcha. So, Very you know, be patient with them. Very interesting. Because it's, it's new to them, too. Gotcha. And honestly, mm-hmm. I would probably call the CATS test number instead of a local number, just yeah, because no, then it's in the federal system, yeah. it's in IACRA, mm-hmm. it automatically goes into your account. It's like boom, boom, boom. Okay, right. so you pass your test. You got mm-hmm. that pretty sheet of paper that says, do not lose this on it. Actually, uh, it didn't this time. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Man, they're really degrading us now. You know, first Good, we got... I lost my other one. I can't find it. <laughs> first we got compared to a cheeseburger, you know, back at the FAA meeting. All right. March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you got you got your exam, and mm-hmm. now do you get a new car? Are you getting nope. a cool license plate, new nope. pen? Nope. No, no. None of the nope. above. You don't even have to go to IACRA and put it in. Oh, yeah. um, basically, the, the the test proctor at that Rocky Mountain didn't know what to do because I was her first test, and the FAA hadn't told them yet. Um, they you know they haven't gotten all the information out yet to the test centers. Um, so I emailed F- you know UAS help at fa.gov and said, hey, what do we do? And to their credit, within 15 minutes, they emailed me back and said, you just hold on to the test score. That's it's like, it. That's you just it. carry it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You just wow. you hold on to it. She said, hold on to it. Or he said, well, he, she, whatever, emailed back and said, hold on to it. And so I said, okay, so can I just put it in my policy and procedures manual? You know, yep, that works. Thanks. That was the extent of my email conversation with the OAS help at fa.gov. Wow, fantastic. And so I actually uh, called the, the, the lady that was my proctor and told her what was going on because she said she didn't know. So she was appreciative of that too. Wow, very interesting. So overall – it you know we always think we know the answers so slow mm-hmm. down study up slow uh, down 90 minutes 40 questions no weather no loading in performance and then keep the piece of paper with you and move on to your merry life no metars oh man <laughs> <laughs> the drone go. gods listen to us <laughs> Yep. I'm just hoping yep. that it doesn't show up in other, you know, because there's that pool of questions. I think it's like 300, mm-hmm. 360 questions that they can pull from. So I'm right. hope, I'm hoping that METARs really aren't well, on there for everybody. The METAR would be under the weather section, and the weather section is not part of their currency test. I mean, it's, it's in that list the FAA put out. It's just not part of it. So it's the same questions as the, as the initial minus, like I said, minus those areas to the point where I actually got one question that I remember from my initial test. And the main reason I remember that is because you look at the chart and you're supposed to follow this 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 railroad from point A to point B and you're supposed to say what airspace are you in. So it is like, oh, that's I got that test last time, that test question. So it was kind of funny. Very you know, the odds are pretty good. If you're you're in that same pool and you're going from sixty questions to forty questions, odds are there's um you know, there's a question or two you might look familiar to you. Also, some that have been reworded just a little bit. Awesome. Awesome. So airspace and sectional is still a big part of it. Airspace and sectionals are huge. Rules are huge. Um, Those are the two sections that you really want to study on. And unless you're like you or like me or like some of the other people in the industry that use this stuff all the time, don't do what I did. I went in as an experiment and I didn't study. I didn't do any tests, any practice tests or anything. Um, but I just wanted to see if I could pass it without, and I, you know, I was willing to, to risk the extra 150 bucks. Um, hopefully my wife won't see this. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was fairly certain I was going to be okay. Um, just simply because of, of the amount of time I've spent on it. Well, and that's an important point to make too, that you and you and myself, you know, we're, we're flying every single day. We're a part of these groups that we comment on every single day. These podcasts you get, you know, you have to dive deep and research every mm-hmm. single mm-hmm. day. So, you know, our experience, your experience is probably going to be a little bit different from, let's yeah, say, well, the quite a bit, quite the average a bit. user. Yeah. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't suggest anybody do what I did. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say anybody, but the vast, vast, vast majority of 107 pilots out there, I would not do that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be the quote unquote unicorn to make it through. Yeah. So, yeah. and um, they do have the nice um, airspace chart legend in the front of the book just like before it's the same book just an updated version so you know the hint would be find that i think it's on page four put a pencil there and you're going to refer to it probably 30 percent of the questions on the test you're going to refer back to it 
That's actually a good point is, uh, you know, you talked about putting a pencil in the book. You guys got to remember you cannot bring your cell phones or any recording oh, devices, ah. no calculators, nothing when you're taking the test with you. So don't be the guy, you know, running around the lobby being like, where do I put my phone? You leave it in your car. Okay? <laughs> I left my truck. I left my truck. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing she told me, which she didn't, uh, I wasn't told last time is you're, you're monitored as you're watching the test. You know, they've got cameras on you. It's a little weird at first. You know, you don't want to scratch your, you know, scratch your ear or pick your nose or something because you're on tape. But um, she said, don't reach into your pockets. Really? Yeah. She goes, don't reach into your pockets. If you do, I'm going to have to come in. Dang. Don't be a cheater. Yeah. I mean, she was cool. She was a great, great lady. And the other issue was when I got there, when she signed in, it said I'd already taken the test once. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. 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 So she had to call cats and get that all straightened out. Let me ask you this. So we <laughs> talked that, you know, for the average person, it's probably a good idea to still go through some some sort of testing. And in fact, oh, absolutely. I, I, I wanted to read something that I found here because mm-hmm. – um, the FAA said very specifically, the FAA disagrees with the notion that no periodic reevaluation of knowledge is necessary. Knowledge of rules, regulations, and operating principles erodes over time, particularly if the remote pilot is not required to recall such information on a frequent basis. Uh-huh. Um, they also suggested um, – People said, you know, it should be longer, but they said, unlike the privileges of a driver's license, which are exercised on a frequent basis by most drivers, many holders of remote pilot certificates may only exercise their privileges occasionally and may not regularly conduct operations that apply all of the concepts tested on the aeronautical knowledge test. For example, a remote pilot in command may spend years never operating outside of class Gulf airspace and then may move to a different location that requires him or her to begin conducting small UAS operations in class Delta airspace. Based on experience with manned pilots, those persons who exercise the privileges of their certificate on an infrequent basis are likely to retain the knowledge for a shorter period of time than those who exercise the privileges of their certificate on a regular basis. So with that being said and what you said, Vic, do you think people need to go to these two, three-day long Part 107 trainings just for the recency test? I would say the vast majority of people don't need to go to that. Um, if you fly once every couple, three months and always in G, <laughs> you know, always in, you know, you're the local guy, which is great. Awesome. Good for you. And you're just not, not stretching what you're flying under. Maybe, probably not though. Um, those I think are more, more suited for the new, uh, the new people doing their initial testing. Yeah. I think I, if you use it, you'll be good. Gotcha. So, I mean, we, you know, hey guys, if you're listening to this, Drone U does have like three separate classes, very mm-hmm. short style, lecture style, and we've got quizzes and tests online. This is what you're awesome. Yeah. I mean, if you're passing those A plus all the time, you're ready to go. So, if you want to test yourself before you go take the test so you don't look like a fool in the lobby, check out, <laughs> check out droneu.education and make sure you take your part 107. Uh, practice quizzes and tests today and you'll know if you're ready to go. So I think it's interesting, Vic, because a lot of people and even us, you know, we were planning on doing all these in-person classes and it just seems like, you know, you still need to study, but I'm not sure that you need to go to a 20 hour long class. No, not unless you're one of the, you know, there's different learning types. Uh, Me, I'm better off being shown stuff. So like the class we did in Santa Clara, um, I probably would not have passed my initial 107 without that. Because I'm not a re- I'm not a read and learn kind of guy. Can't never been able to ever since kindergarten. I guess I don't remember kindergarten. <laughs> it's a long time ago. I just yeah I don't think people really need those big huge classes. They need to study. They need to do the practice test. Drone you members are in a great place because they've got we've got all those resources on the dashboard. But yeah, that definitely would help for your currency test to be able to sit down and study and go over the rules because those are important and go over the airspace and um, uh, charts. Yeah, agreed 100%. Now, if you guys are a Part 61 pilot, there is good news for you. You only have to take the online PowerPoint. I mean, I mean, online test that the FAA calls it. Just kidding. Not the current. Yeah, it's really important. Um, also, it's, it's, it's weird how they're doing that. It really is because you also have to have your uh, check ride for your 24-hour your period for Part 61. So you have to be current on your Part 61 then you take the online PowerPoint again, and voila, there it is. So uh, I don't think so. Really? From what I'm understanding, 
you're current. If you're part 61 and you're current, your 107 is just is 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 current as well. As long as you stay current, but you have to stay current. That's how it was explained in that in that one FA memo. It was also explained 18 different ways. But, yeah, because um. <laughs> I'm reading it right now from the FAA's uh, website, and it says Part 61 Recurrent Training Course. That's the PowerPoint. After a pilot receives a remote pilot certificate with an SUAS rating, that person must retain and periodically update the required aeronautical knowledge to continue to operate. As a renewal process, the remote pilot must complete either recurrent training course or recurrent knowledge test within 24 calendar months. Um I, you know what, you're that's probably right. Just the opposite of what that FA memo came out. If you're current part 61, you have everything. Your medical, if you need one, you're 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 up to date on your flights and everything. It's just considered an endorsement. Interesting. That, that's that's two different ways. And again, remember we got back to the FA not being really good at putting out information. Yeah, yeah, we were joking about. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to say who we were joking about, but yes. <laughs> so, all right. So for part that's 61, funny. it's uh, up in the air. But if yeah, you're you part gotta, 107, you're part you know exactly what to part do. Part 61, do your own research. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about you anyway because you treat us oh, like crap from the group. So anyway. No, I'm kidding. We love you, pilots. We got a lot of 61 guys in the group and gals. Yeah, yeah. No, there's no. we really do. I don't want to I don't want to uh, ostracize them. They're good people. So I'm just mm-hmm. making a joke about part 61. Anyway, guys, um, Vic, I really appreciate you coming on the show, sure, sure. telling us about the 40 questions you took in 90 minutes at an FAA testing center, mm-hmm. which you figured out at catstest.com and booked it over yep. the phone. Now you're going to have your handy piece of paper and you're ready to go. I am. I'm ready to go. Well, thank you, sir. Sure thing. Now, guys, if you need to learn more about Part 107 or the recency exam and maybe you need to study up, go to droneu.education. But otherwise, my name is Paul, his name is Vic, and you're listening to Ask Droneu. Droneu.